Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey Pagadora, and this is Senior Moments to Remember. Thank you for joining us today. And as we spend a wonderful time reading God's Word and worshiping Him and doing all the fun stuff that we do here in Senior Moments to Remember, I'd like to encourage you to open your heart and to remember that God has something good in store for you. God is working things out for your good. He is the God who promised never to leave you, never to forsake you. God remembers you. Let's open our hearts in prayer. Father, I pray God that this day and this time together will be a blessed time for Tatay, for Nanay. Lord, wherever he is, whatever she is doing, Lord, let your presence be there. And thank you, God. You will lift them up. You will strengthen them. You promised in your word that for every life, Lord, that you give them in Lord, you strengthen them. You provide strength, O oh God. And every day, you strengthen them. Thank you so much, O oh God, for the promise of strength in their bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we continue, please don't hesitate to type in your prayer requests in the comment section below or type in a greeting and let us know where you are. We would love to hear from you. Let's have a great time of worship. Good morning. Come and join me in worshiping our wonderful God. Moments to remember, moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember, moments to remember. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in knowledge. They will stay fresh and green to proclaim the Lord is upright. He's my rock and there's no weakness in Him. Moments to remember. Moments to remember. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Moments to remember. Moments to remember Planted in the house of the Lord They will flourish in the courts of our God They will still bear fruit in old age They will stay fresh and green To proclaim the Lord is upright He's my rock and there's no weakness in Him Moments to remember Moments to remember to remember, moments to remember, moments to remember. Hungry, I come to you, for I know you satisfied. I am. A but I know your love does not run dry So I wait for you So I wait for you I 
restores my life. So I wait for you. So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, Good day to you. This is Pastor Joey and this is Wow Moment. Wow meaning words of wisdom. And we know that wisdom is very important to you because you have lived it. You have proven it and you are now enjoying the fruit of wisdom in your life. Our wow moment for today will be coming from Proverbs chapter 8 verses 1 to 5. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. O simple ones, learn prudence. O fools, learn sense. Last week, we talked about the truth that wisdom is available anywhere. And that wisdom is available to anybody. Wisdom is always available to you. So every day, you can still grow wiser. There will never be a day that we will say to ourselves, we have learned everything that there is to learn. There's always something new that the Lord has in store for us that we can learn. And every day we can still grow wiser. So today, we will be talking about two things that wisdom brings to your life. Prudence and sense. Now, prudence is manifested in several ways, but we will only be able to look at a few for today. One way that prudence is manifested is by having restraint. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. When words are many, transgression is not lacking. But whoever restrains his lips is prudent. When you're able to restrain or control your speech, it shows prudence. It's a way that prudence is manifested. Restraining your words. An example in the Bible of somebody who is able to restrain his speech is David. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Another way that prudence is manifested is by how we respond to danger. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. The prudent sees danger and hides himself. But the simple go on and suffer for it. Proverbs 27 verse 12. The prudent sees danger and hides himself. But the simple go on and suffer for it. Prudent people are the opposite of reckless people. Reckless people have no restraint. They cannot restrain their words and they cannot restrain themselves. And that is why reckless people always find themselves in trouble because of their words. They're always in arguments and they're always in, in danger and they always find themselves falling into a hole because they are reckless. But you, because of your prudence, you're different. You have a different destiny. You're not into trouble. You're not into arguments because you know how to restrain your words. You know how to restrain yourself. The second thing that we want to talk about that wisdom brings into your life is sense. And you know what? When it comes to sense, the Bible says that there are people who have sense, there are people who lack sense, and there are people who have no sense. 
The people who lack sense, they end up in trouble. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21, The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. But as for you, what does the Bible say about you who have sense and live in wisdom? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 8, A man is commended according to his good sense, but one who is twisted in mind is despised. Because of your good sense, you are respected. And you are respected not just because of your age, but because of the wisdom that you speak, because of the sense that people find in you. Nowadays, people need sense. People need to talk sense into themselves. And you may be that person that can talk sense into some people. Because days right now are difficult. People are desperate. People are out of their wits, so to speak. You may be that person that can talk sense, talk good sense into them and keep them out of trouble. And you see, when you're able to talk sense into them, when they're able to grab sense and accept sense and receive sense into themselves, something good happens to them. Proverbs 19 verse 8, Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. Hopefully, when you try to talk sense into people, they will listen. But prayerfully, they will also make a decision to receive Jesus in, your heart, in their hearts as you talk to them about their need for salvation. Now, whether we are talking about being prudent or having sense, we're talking about making decisions. And every day, you make decisions. You are who you are right now, partly because of the decisions that you make about wisdom, about having sense, about being prudent. Help your grandchildren make those right decisions. Help your children understand, help your grandchildren understand the results of decisions, how it benefits them when they listen to wisdom, how it brings good to them when they listen to wisdom, how it brings wonderful blessings to their lives when they are prudent and when they have sense, so that even at a young age, they will also enjoy the fruit of wisdom in their lives. This has been Wow Moment, and our prayer for you is that as you continue living in wisdom, the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead of you will even be more fruitful. God bless you. Moments to remember. Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Oyen for our Say Amen segment. I'm going to share with you Noah in Genesis chapter 6, how he lived a life of righteousness and obedience in the midst of wicked environment. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In verses 11 and 12, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. We can see here that there was corruption, there was violence, there was wickedness during Noah's days, and it was not just a few people. In his generation, the passage says that every intention of the thoughts of man's heart was only evil. But take note of this in verse 5. The Lord saw. In verse 12, God saw. We can see here that we cannot hide anything from the Lord. God sees everything. But let's take a look of Noah in verses 8 and 9. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Can you imagine a righteous person living among wicked generation, wicked environment, Whenever he turned to his right or he turned to his left, there were sins everywhere. In verse 13, And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. 
behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God made a decision to destroy the earth because of sin. But because Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, the Lord spared him. And in the following verses, when we read it, we can see God instructed Noah to build an ark. And that was not just a small ark. That was a huge ark. It was not just an ordinary ark. But Noah did not complain. In verse 22, it says, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. So Noah was not just a righteous man. He lived in full obedience to God. He was focused on what God was saying to him, not to what others around him were doing. Noah was living an exemplary life, so living right is not impossible. It's always a decision to make. But what causes him to live a blameless life in spite of the sins around him? The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So this is the secret. As we know, Noah came from the line of Seth and Enoch. He came from a godly line. And so we as Christians, as godly people, we can also make a difference. Let's take every opportunity to teach our young ones, our children, or even our grandchildren, and to pass to the next generation the teaching and the principles we receive from the Lord whenever we read our Bible, whenever we have our devotion. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is our Say Amen segment. God bless you. Moments to remember. Hello and full exemplars, this is Pastor Paul and welcome to our daily surprise. Of course, when you see me, you know it's going to be a pop quiz. Yes, yeah, so for today, I'm going to ask you three questions from our past Sababa lesson. And if you know the answer, all you have to do is to type down your answers in the comment section below. So, are you ready? Yay! All right, let's start with question number one. Ta-da! This place was named after Augustus Caesar. This place was named after Augustus Caesar. Is it A, Capernaum, B, Caesarea, or C, Nazareth? Is it A, Capernaum, B, Caesarea, or C, Nazareth? If you know the answer, type in now quick. Yes, now let's go to question number two. For our question number two, who is the apostle that was imprisoned in Caesarea? Who is the apostle that was imprisoned in Caesarea? Is it A, Peter, B, Barnabas, or C, Paul? Is it A, Peter, B, Barnabas, or C, Paul? You know the answer? Type in the... All right, for our third and final question. What is the name of the Roman officer that got saved in Caesarea? What is the name of the Roman officer that got saved in Caesarea? Is it A, Pontius Pilate, B, Apollos, or C, Cornelius? Is it A, Pontius Pilate, B, Apollos, or C, Cornelius? You know the answer, type in below. All right. I'll give you a chance to check your answers in five, four, three, two, and time's up. Let's check your answers and let's see if you're correct. 
So for our question number one, this place was named after Augustus Caesar and the correct answer is letter B, Caesarea. So it's obvious. Caesarea came from the name Augustus Caesar. All right. And let's go to question number two. Who is the apostle that was imprisoned in Caesarea? And the correct answer is letter C. And the correct answer is C, Apostle Paul. So Paul was imprisoned in Caesarea. And for our third question, for our last question, what is the name of the Roman officer that got saved in Caesarea? And the correct answer is also C. Right? Cornelius. So Cornelius was the Roman officer who got saved. Not only him, but his whole household got saved in Caesarea. Alright, so did you get your answers right? Yay! Congratulations, my dear exemplars. So we hope to see you again next time for another pop quiz. So always take note of our Sibaba lessons so you won't miss out in answering these questions. Again, this is Pastora Paula. I will see you again next time for another pop quiz. Bye! Moments to remember Hello po and welcome once again to our Memory Verse segment. Yes, I know you can do this! Our Memory Verse for today is found in Micah chapter 7, verse 7. And it says there, But as for me, I will look to the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Amen and amen. Our God hears us. Amen po ba? Amen. Awesome. And right now, we will go to COP Batangas to hear someone who will help us. And that is Sister Yoli Francia. Hello po. Hi. Sister Yoli, do you think you can do this po? Yes, I can. Awesome! Now take it away! Micah chapter 7 verse 7 But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me! Wow! That was really great! Thank you so much po, Sister Yoli! And I know you followed her in reciting that verse because we are now ready to our round one of our memory verse. Round one, we will remove a few words from our verse. So here we go. Round one, Micah chapter 7 verse 7. But as for me, I will, my God, Amen! Did you get that right, Po? If you got it right, please type got it at the comment section down below. Thank you so much. And now let's move to round two of our memory verse. Round two, we will remove more words in our verse. And I know you can do this well, right? Here we go. Micah chapter 7 verse 7. But as for me, I will, I will, my, amen and amen. Did you get that right again, Po? If you did, please type got it at the comment section below so everyone will know that you got it right. Amen. So right now, why don't we recite all the verse together with Sister Yoli. Are you ready, Po? Here we go. Micah chapter 7, verse 7. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Po, Sister Yoli. And thank you for joining us today in our Memory Verse segment. Until next time, God bless you all! Moments to remember. Good morning! Welcome to Golden Hour. I'm Pastora Babes. It's time to sing along with me. Come on, let's sing po. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Yeah.
the next time, Paul. God bless. Moments to remember. Hello, this is Pastor Ratin, and welcome once again to our prayer time. Thank you so much for always allowing us to be part of your life every time you share with us your prayer request. It will always be a privilege to pray for you. So how do we pray? Fervently and with joy. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for the privilege you are giving us every day to just lay out before you the needs of your people because we know that you are the God who answers our prayers. Father, right now we lift up to you Sister Imelda. Thank you, Father, for continuously keeping her family safe and protected from this deadly pestilence. Let your promise, O God, be fulfilled in their lives that this evil shall not be allowed to befall upon them. And also, Father, I commit to you, Brother Dominador, Thank you, God, for blessing him with this job. Thank you, Lord, that in spite of this crisis, he was given the slot to go back to his work as a seaman. And Father, thank you that your hand of protection will always go before him, that you will keep him far from any kind of danger or accident. And the same way, Father, I commit to you, Sister Luz Viminda. Thank you, Lord, that as she needs wisdom, you will give it liberally without finding fault. Father, thank you that she will have the knowledge and the wisdom to learn about remote selling. That God, you will give her more creativity and skills so that she will excel in the insurance business. And Father, I also commit to you, Brother Rogelio. Thank you, God, for giving him good health, long and satisfying years of life. And thank you, Lord, that every day the joy of the Lord will always be his strength. And for Sister Purification, thank you, God, that you will keep all her children who are frontliners protected and safe. Thank you, Lord, that you will fill their hearts with faith, with courage, with strength, Lord God, with hope that you will always be the God that will keep them protected, that you will not allow sickness, this virus, oh God, to touch them in Jesus' name. And Father, I also commit to you the newly born grandchild of Sister Purification, that you will cause this child to grow healthy, strong, and far from any kind of sickness as well. And Father, lastly, for Sister Victoria Dizon, thank you, God, for strengthening her body and guiding her in every decision she has to make. Thank you also, Father, that she will enjoy good health, that she will be walking from strength to strength. Father, we commit to you all the needs of your seniors, knowing that faithful are you who made the promise and that you will never leave them nor forsake them, but you will fulfill all your good promises in their lives. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you again tomorrow for another time of prayer. Moments to remember. Thank you for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to have you and we're looking forward to having you join us again tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. So as continue with your day, I'd like to encourage you, Tatay. I'd like to encourage you, Nanay. Remember that God promised that He will always carry you in His arms. He never grows tired of helping you. He never grows tired of strengthening you. Just keep holding on to Him. He loves you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonderful time that we spent together. And I pray, God, that as Tatai goes on in his day and Nanai goes on in her day, your presence will always be with them. We thank you for your word that has been planted in their hearts. It will give them strength and joy as well. And God, this day is the day that you have made. Yes, Lord, they will rejoice. Thank you so much again for your love in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Senior Moments to Remember. God bless you. Moments to remember.